What's a company secret you can share now that you don't work there? The secret ingredient of Jimmy John's tuna salad is soy sauce. In the United States, one company's bread and butter was simply reboxing and relabeling computer monitors from China to make it seem like they were from the company and made assembled in some way by them. Worked in insurance, hundreds of people have access to your SSN with no security clearance or background check. Worked at a major cable ISP and there for billing cycles. They upgraded the billing system, but did something wrong, and all, but the current cycle got a late charge. But instead of fixing it immediately, we were told to credit their account if the customer called in. I did the math, and for the size of our city, and the three four of people wrongly charged, it was over a million USD. Most people just pay their bill and don't look to close. At a major insurance company I wrote software for was very big on security. If we needed to make an update, we weren't allowed to remote into the server even though you physically could, it was just against policy. To make an update, you had to put your changes onto portable storage, show your ID to the security guy, use your key to open the door, get escorted to the server, then they'd observe you via cameras. The login? Admin the password? Blank. Literally no password. I worked for a large construction company, and the sales guys would intentionally omit items from contracts because they received incentives for what would then become a change order. Me you forgot to include any framing in this contract. Sales weasel oh, I guess it's a change order then. Customer cries. Maple sap can be trucked in from other states and where it's turned from sap to syrup decides on the state it comes from, not the location of the trees. If you don't hear music when you're supposedly on hold, the operator simply muted their MIC and can still hear you. I've heard interesting and damning things while they thought I couldn't hear them. Ice manufacturing my shift manager dropped a 7 gram bag of weed in a bag of ice. It went out for delivery. No one ever phoned in to complain though. Arby's manager replaced the expiration stickers on the bread with new ones. I guess so the bread would last longer that way. I threw out 100 pitters with green fuzz on them after checking the manager's work. The difference between the high-quality deli meat sold at MS and the regular deli meat sold in other grocery stores is that we changed the label. We would literally stop the production line, wait for the guy who ran the label machine to swap them out and then start it back up again. One of our best restaurants in my town is locally famous and everyone goes there. They say everything is homemade. The thing they are famous for is the hot beef sandwiches, with homemade potatoes and gravy, and the fish fry. The fish fry they also have during the week listed as an intrigue called the cod platter. It is instant Cisco brown gravy mix and instant Cisco mashed potatoes, the cod is only fresh and fried on Fridays. If you order it during the week it is frozen breaded Cisco fish fillets aka a blend of random fish shaped into a stick. Skull. I'm 90 sure a company I worked for was importing product from China, repacking it and selling it as made in USA. I.e. blending it with the product we did make in the US. Buses due for MOT a certificate of roadworthiness in the UK would have their faulty parts switched out from a working part from another bus then swapped back afterwards. Common practice. Also, I'm no germophobe but there's no way in hell I'd eat on public transport. They really aren't clean. Everyone's favorite sauce that people wanted the recipe for was mostly mayonnaise. Sure it was called creamy pineapple sauce but it's just pineapple salsa and mayonnaise. Ice machines are disgusting inside, full of slime. Hotels do not typically have security, maintenance or housekeeping on staff 24-7. Once housekeeping finishes cleaning all the rooms, the entire staff leaves except for one front desk employee. Worked at an ISP, we lied to customers daily about speeds and delivery times, we sold internet in stations we knew were full, and DSL is just garbage don't had a single customer in 7 years who actually got the speed we burned out rates in support was three months before people you tried to actually help customers you got chewed out and was a problem. Your luggage at an airport isn't really handled with care. We sometimes made up letters to the editor. 
the drawing to win two free weeks of Sparkle Diaper service is fixed. If the name on the entry is eligible isn't currently a customer, and hasn't been a customer in the last year it wins. I've worked at Petco and PetSmart and both are pretty terrible. I was a groomer so I had things like benefits, but the amount of people who would try to hide injuries to a pet was shameful, including upper management. They are mostly groomers trained by groomers trained by Petco and PetSmart. If you want to mass produced grooms by people who hardly care then it's fine to go there. But in my experience at least in a big city they care less than other groomers. It's also lucky if you get half the services you paid for, and none of them work like they claim. I used to work at a chain of local goods stores in Washington, a lot of the products were not fully local or even half. I used to work at the front desk of an hotel. More often than not if we tell you we're fully booked when you try to make a reservation, we actually are. Beaut. Sometimes it's just bullshit we make up because we got a bad vibe from you. We get blamed if we accept a booking from a person who then trashed the room, or was just all around annoying rude to the staff. It's not all hotels I worked at that do this, but some do. I used to work as a consultant and I would get billed out to multiple clients at once. Work in IT. Everyone pretty much openly admitted our software was held together by the digital equivalent of duct tape and chicken wire. Used to work at a graphic design firm. All our Adobe software was pirated. Not me, but a friend. A lot of chain restaurants will buy a microwave pudding and sauce from the supermarket for about £3, and sell in their restaurant for about £15. Movie theaters don't make money off the tickets they make money off the food and drinks. Despite this, 99.9 .9 of theater staff give less than zero shits if you sneak food in. All we ask is that you're subtle enough that we don't get yelled at by the 0.1 who cared. Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Facility The guy in QA is boning two or three of the manufacturing techs, usually in the sterile rooms where you have to double badge to get in. He's married, the women he's boning are married, and his son also works in the facility. I was dismissed for insubordination because I was asked to do some shit that was unethical illegal and refused to do it. Worked in IT in the HQ of a MLM. To the public, no it's not a pyramid scheme never. Behind the curtain. Everyone knows it's shady AF, people are counting the days. You work too long for a MLM, you're pretty much stuck with MLM jobs after you reach a certain level. All of the C-suite XX that weren't there at the start came from other MLM gigs and left to other MLM gigs. And they only have that C-suite gig because they have huge followers. Not one of the C-suite people had a clue what they should have been doing. If you go to an event that has event security ask them for better seats, or be really nice to them they might bring you something special. I work at a hockey rink we give nice people pucks, pins, and let them go down to the front to see the players. Your warranty service part that took 8 months actually arrived 3 weeks after they paid the invoice. They didn't even order it for 7 months. They told you it was manufacturing delays and supply chain issues but in reality they couldn't afford to pay their bills and had to pick and choose which orders to place. You weren't a priority. They were just really bad at budgeting and damage control. 20 years at a dealership in the parts department. Most of the time, parts are marked up higher than MSRP. The dealers I have worked at will not install customer supplied parts, however, everything is negotiable meaning they will usually negotiate on the price. Especially if you are a loyal customer. I worked at a candy bagging warehouse like the crappy .99 gas station candy where we would even make trail mix by hand. Tons of sweat would drip into the mix because we would be in a 100F plus room with little ventilation. Also my boss was a hunter so a quarter of the warehouse was dedicated to his taxidermy treasure room. Fucking smelt like shit in the summer, but he was so proud of himself. Edit also should add that if the expiration dates were bad we would use nail polish remover to take the date off. Outback Steakhouse uses prepackaged taco seasoning on their steaks. In a broadband company I worked for I was tasked with editing thousands of complaints to avoid huge Ofcom fines. Okay, it's not really the world's best cup of coffee.